I'd like to welcome our viewers to Ignite the Spark. My name is Shar Specht Pakniak. I am the founder and CEO of an organization called Horizons for Girls. And what we do is we mentor middle school and high school students, uh, really working with them on that journey through their education, looking at uh, potential career paths that they might want to take, and really helping them make some decisions that are going to help them get down to that path of where they want to be going. I'm excited about our guest today because I hadn't met this young lady. We've been friends, what, maybe a couple, couple of months. months. Yeah, That's a couple it. Of months. And so I'm, I'm really in, uh, excited because I'm going to be able to find out a little bit more about who she is and what she does. And it's going to tie into a topic that's really important to me, which is diversity. And real quickly, uh, recently I met with uh, Dr. Sheehan, who just recently retired as superintendent of the Sheboygan Area School District. And he had shared with me, and I do not remember the exact uh, statistic, but he was talking about the number of different languages that are spoken right here in the Sheboygan Area School District. And I want to say it was close to or just over 30. Wow. And I'm thinking, that's got to be a challenge as a teacher. I mean, you've got to be aware of the languages, trying to communicate with these students, and even then be aware of some of the customs of those cultures that those students are coming from. So that to me is very interesting. But my guest today is Sherm, and I'm going to let you, Sherm, is Charm. <laughs> so you did that. Sorry, Charm. Charm, Sherm, <laughs> all the same. But yeah. Charm, why don't you explain a little bit about who you are and what your connection is to Sherm. Okay, so uh, my name is Charm Durr, and I am the elected diversity director for Sheboygan Area SHRM. And so SHRM is a international organization. It stands for Society of Human Resource Management. And for our local chapter, I am in charge of championing diversity initiatives uh, within the Sheboygan area. So it's a very, very exciting role. Um, I have been in this role since January of this year, and I have a two-year term. So two years to turn it all around. <laughs> very, in, uh, very interesting. And I, I want to say that many, many years ago, I actually believe I went to one of the meetings um, years ago. I used to be involved in radio, worked okay. in radio for 22 plus years. Um, and hiring was just a piece of what I was responsible for and definitely wanted to be able to have that conversation with other human resource people. Right. And really found it interesting. Uh, the story I always like to share is, and it's got to be probably 15, 20 years ago, I was the executive director of the, of the uh, Literacy Council. And I had a couple of employees, um, and I wanted to send them to some training up in Stevens Point. Okay. Two people. I thought, get into one car, less expensive. You can have some conversations on the way. One, this was a woman and a man. Both of them married to other people. Mm -hmm. uh, Myrta, wonderful woman, loved her. Uh, she is Spanish. I believe she even came from Spain. Okay. But she said, well, I can't. I can't ride up to Stevens Point with this man. He's not my husband. And mm. I almost got angry because I'm thinking, okay, it's going to cost me twice as much in gas. And you could be communicating with each other as you're driving up there and coming back. And she said, I can't. That's not allowed for my culture. Mm. And that was the first time it really hit me right in the face, and it's like, whoa, wait a minute. 
I need to better understand and respect all mm -hmm. of those cultures that are around me and working with me. Right. And I'm going to guess that's still a challenge for a lot of employers. Um, it's definitely a challenge. And, you know, in this area alone, I guess I can kind of start from the beginning, attracting and retaining talent. Um, that's very, very important because we have a stagnant population here. Once people move here, they, you know, they stay. Um, and people who grew up here <laughs> are not leaving. And so, so we are having that that challenge there with bringing, you know, people into the community. And also just with cultural competency, making sure that people, you know, when they are welcomed to, into these communities, making sure that as employers, as managers, we are culturally competent to navigate those complex situations with employees. Yeah. And, and there's so many of them. I mean, I, I look at, I still remember when we were working with a lot of refugees coming uh, from the Vietnam, mm -hmm. uh, Hmong people that had maybe fought with American soldiers mm. and they were coming to the Sheboygan area. A lot of the churches were sponsoring those families as they relocated to this area. Mm -hmm. And very active right now is, uh, again, a lot of refugees that are coming into the area being sponsored by different churches, trying to bring those cultures in. Right. And it's definitely a challenge. I look at my students mm -hmm. and I'm very excited because one of the things we're doing is the end of September, we're going to be doing a 5K to try and bring more awareness to and try and stop bullying. I saw, I saw that. And I saw that. it's a challenge because, again, if you don't understand something, mm -hmm. very often you're making fun of it. You mm -hmm. know, and when I pick up students at school and I see students dressed in different, um, different, I don't want to say costumes, but mm -hmm. different Attire, apparel right? that's appropriate mm -hmm. for their culture. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I look and I say, you know, are they being accepted? And I know that's a challenge for, again, for the teachers right. to try and understand all of those cultures and all of those habits and behaviors uh, because even communicating again with the families. Maybe they can communicate with a student, right. but are they able to understand and communicate with the parents? That's I'm not true. sure. It's got to be a challenge. <clears throat> and Shara, I don't, I don't know. I th I think that it probably lies. And when people hear the word diversity, it's automatically, you mm -hmm. know, they they tighten up. And I think that's because they don't understand what it encompasses. Um, and I think that people shy away from difficult conversations. And you know, you worry about being politically correct or not. And sometimes you just have to have those conversations you know, be them awkward or not, so that you can learn more, you know. Um, I think that there is comfort and commonality, and so people, you know, they like to stay what they're, stay in the realm that they're used to being in, but you grow in diversity. And <clears throat> a lot of times I hear people say, well, how can I, wh what can I do about diversity? you can just get started because the change has to happen at this level. It's not, you know, it's, it's not a, a top-down change. The change has to start with us. So kind of back to what you were saying, having those conversations and learning how to communicate and just recognizing, uh, you know, and appreciating and respecting our differences, not tolerating differences, but uh, respecting and acknowledging them. That's where we all can grow. Well, and again, say as an employer, I think by having that diverse workforce mm -hmm. makes you a better uh, employer to compete in a global market. I'd agree with that. Um, I just came across the term neurological diversity. And so um, that speaks to just the, the diversity of having different mindsets, right? So if you have 
the same group of employees with the same experiences, you're going to kind of create an echo chamber um, of ideas and your organization can't grow from that. In this area in particular, you know, even my friends are surprised when they come and visit, but this is a global market here in Sheboygan. Um, you know, we, are, we have top-notch companies, we have Kohler, we have Rockline, we have so many top-notch companies that have services that are distributed across um, the world. And so it's very important for, for our employees to be recognized, yeah. Yeah, because they're not just competing in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Exactly, exactly. Right. There, there, there is so much more out there, and they really need to understand that. One of my mentors, her husband uh, works for Core Company, mm -hmm. and he is, I think he's in China right now. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, again, those companies are out there all over the place mm -hmm. and they have to be able to understand right. and communicate mm -hmm. and and really get it. Yeah. Um, I had coffee with a friend this morning and we were talking, we have to be talking about nonprofits and okay. she was sharing with me uh, on, uh, a company that she's working with uh, that is a startup, a lot of entrepreneurs getting together and we were talking about the fact that the people that are working together are most of them are Sheboygan, Wisconsin natives, but mm -hmm. they're also still coming from a very diverse uh, background. Right. So you've got somebody that's involved in marketing. You've got somebody that's involved in accounting. Right. You've got somebody that's involved in engineering. Mm -hmm. So again... Yes, we might all be white Caucasians, you know, from Sheboygan, Wisconsin, but we're still very often coming almost from a different culture. Mm -hmm. You know, the accountant's not going to think the same as I am because my background is, has been for many years marketing. Yeah. So, and I love to be visionary and think mm -hmm. of a big picture mm -hmm. and think of, oh, I think I can sell it this way. And that accountant is mm -hmm. saying, black and white, okay, does that balance? Right. You know, so we have to understand each other even at that le mm -hmm. level. So take it further. Right, right. And, and compare it to culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, I agree. Um, and with diversity, I think it's, you know, to your point, you can define diversity in the lens that's given to you, right? And so we all have these different identities. I'm African American, I'm a female, I'm in an interracial relationship. And so these are all the different things that identify me. Um, and being able to work in an environment where all of those different identities can thrive with your different identities and your lenses on diversity, that's where people can really grow. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You're, gonna, you're gonna become so much stronger, right? so much more intuitive. Mm -hmm. You know, if I don't understand something, I can go to somebody else and I can say, this doesn't make sense to me, but maybe you understand what he's talking yeah, about because exactly. I don't get it. Right, I'm not getting it, right. You yeah. know, so that to me has a huge value. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think, it, again, it starts at a very early uh, point and I can you know personally look back and uh, I love my my parents have been gone a long time mm -hmm. love them to death mm -hmm. but my my father was awful I mean he didn't like black people he didn't like Jewish people if you weren't mm -hmm. German mm -hmm. through and through mm -hmm. there had to be something wrong with mm -hmm. you you know, you know that good German background mm -hmm. And my mother, oh my God, my mother was French, Italian, German, and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, and my mother was Catholic, and my father was Lutheran. Well, again, that that yeah, was also those are a multiple culture. cultures within itself. Yeah, that's very true. So, so bringing those together mm -hmm. could definitely be a challenge. But the value of bringing them together and communicating, simply communicating, yeah, is going to make a big, big difference. I'd agree. I'd have to uh, agree with that. It's got to be definitely, you know, and reflecting again to human resource people. Mm -hmm. uh, 
that again, even just sitting down and doing a simple interview. Right. It has to be an, a challenge all by itself. Yeah. Um, and there's been a lot of research done on implicit bias. And so those are, you know, subconscious biases that we have, um, that everyone has. You know, a preference to the color blue versus the color gray. And so a lot of uh, studies, as I was saying, have been done. And there is one study through Harvard there's a website, implicit.harvard.edu, um, that I would encourage people to go to. And you can take a survey and find out what your implicit or what your subconscious biases are. And so, again, tying that back to HR, in an interview, being conscious of those things, very important for an HR practitioner. And so that's one of the things that we try to speak to when we have different programs through Sherm, so definitely. Well, and you know, and then again, you, you mentioned it, the, the challenge of the aging population. Too. And you know, let, let's talk about age discrimination mm -hmm. for a second. Yeah. You know, I, I'm 65, mm -hmm. okay? You know, that definitely could be a challenge. It used to be a challenge, but now you look around mm -hmm. and you see so many people that retire Mm -hmm. And then go back to work, right? And that's I'm saying a lot of that. to see the value mm -hmm. of a senior citizen mm -hmm. and their knowledge and their expertise, and seeing that pulled back into yeah. the work the workforce to yeah. me is exciting. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely exciting, and I think that that's also an opportunity for companies to grow new talent that they're attracting. Um, and trying to retain because that's a mentoring relationship that can be, you know, put between the generations, which I've seen a lot of in the HR field. That's definitely um, something that we're trying to work towards more mentoring programs to help newer employees on the workforce. Well, and as we were getting ready to start, the one thing we I mentioned and we started to talk about a little bit is the which I never even thought of, but mm -hmm. it makes sense, mm -hmm. where human resource people are now going to military bases and they're looking at potential employees that they're able to recruit. Okay, you finished your time in the Air Force, the mm -hmm. uh, Marines, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. Why don't you decide to move to Sheboygan, Wisconsin right. and get a job here? Mm -hmm. And that was like, oh, the light bulb goes on. It's like, yeah, right. why not? Yeah, um, one of SHRM's initiatives this year is uh, are towards hiring veterans. And so we're encouraging organizations to hire veterans. Um, just because you're in the military doesn't mean that you don't have transferable skills into common workplaces. And it's just, you know, trying to teach, again, the HR practitioners, so the recruiters, that you know, to not have that bias. Maybe this person may have PTSD. There are just different types of biases that people in the military face when trying to move into the civilian workforce. So it's that's interesting, interesting because one of one of my mentors, um, she was uh, she was in the army, mm -hmm. and when she was in the army, she was fixing mil uh, medical equipment. Okay. And she said, okay, it was great. It was a skill. I, you know, I liked it. She volunteered, she decided she wanted to volunteer as a mentor with Horizons. Mm -hmm. And I saw her working with students and she was great at connecting with these teenagers and talking to them. And she goes, I just don't know what I'm going to do. And we had coffee one day and I said, you should look into being a counselor, a social worker, into something mm -hmm. like that. Well, guess what? She has, I think she's finished, finished her master's wow. or her bachelor's, mm -hmm. and now she's working on her master's degree. And she wow. says, I love this. Yeah. You know, so again, you know, being able to tap into somebody that was military exactly. and now saying, okay, try something else. Mm -hmm. See if that's what you want to do. Yeah. And who knows where it's going to lead? And that's exactly. what I always tell my students is experiment. Get mm -hmm. out there. Job shadow. 
Mm -hmm. Now, before they tell us we need to shut up and go home, <laughs> quickly, I want to talk about something both you and I are working on. Yes. There is an event that's coming up a little bit later now in September. It's yes. called Coming Together, mm -hmm. the Come Together. Come come, together. The Come Together uh, Festival, Unity in the Community. And so it's going to be taken, taken place on September 15th um, from noon to 5 p.m., at the uh, farmer's Fountain market. Park, right? Yep, at Fountain Park, and it's gonna run concurrently with the farmer's market. And so it's a, um, it's a festival so that we can celebrate the diversity that's in our community and bring people together with food and um, music. music and art and conversation and just a willingness to learn. I think, again, it's an opportunity for people to experience mm -hmm. the diversity that we do have right here in Sheboygan. What, I, what I'm excited about is my students are going to be having an ice cream social. Oh, and oh. they're going to be, uh, we're working with Culver's, thank you very much Culver's, <laughs> for supplying the frozen custard. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be, I think, there's five different flavors, uh, international flavors of toppings oh. that you're going to be able to try. There's, I think there's an Italian one. There's uh, one from Greece. There is, I, th I know there's a Mexican one, mm -hmm. uh, but I, there's five of them. And of course, then we'll have the standard chocolate mm -hmm. and caramel if you're afraid to experiment with something <laughs> right. different. Right. But one of my mentors was online and she did a bunch of research and we picked five countries that again we said, okay, mm -hmm. try something different. Right. And I, hopefully that's a way to encourage people to step out of their comfort zone. I you know, agree. and I think they're going to be surprised yeah. because they're going to go, oh, I guess what you're eating in your country isn't that bad mm -hmm. after all. Yeah. So, I'm excited about that. I think it's a great opportunity for us to do a little fundraising mm -hmm. as well as then support mm -hmm. the whole fact that we are celebrating the diversity, diversity that we community. have right here in Sheboygan. So it's yeah. kind of exciting. Yeah, very exciting. Very exciting. Now, how did you end up getting pulled into this? I don't even know. Um, so Katie was the previous diversity director for SHRM, and then she got um, elected into a different role. And she connected me with Craig and okay. Sarah. And so it just it just took off from there. It's exciting. Yeah, I, you it's know, very too. exciting. And again, it's kind of neat because it's a very diverse committee. Mm-hmm. It is a uh, bunch of bunch of people from a lot of different places mm -hmm. that said, "Hey, wait a minute, yeah, let's do this." So this, this is, is important the to second us. Second one that right? they're doing. It's kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, it's Saturday, September fifteenth, and that's going to be really exciting to see people. I know last year they had a lot of fun, and mm -hmm. it was it was for a first one. I thought they had a lot of fun. Um, and my students, I'm trying to think, I know they, oh, they were there face painting, I think. Um, okay. So they have fun with that. And then the other thing that I mentioned before that's kind of exciting, the following Saturday, uh, my, my organization, Horizons for Girls, were sponsoring a 5K okay. uh, to try and stop uh, or at least raise awareness of mm -hmm. the fact that there's bullying. Mm -hmm. It's been out there forever, and it still goes on. Yeah. Um, last month, I was able to interview a mother whose daughter went through some incredible experiences with being uh, bullied, mm -hmm. and um, we were able to discuss that topic and how that affects families and students uh, and I know the school system definitely uh, puts in place uh, a no tolerance mm -hmm. um, policy. But again, let's educate our students and our families. What is that? What does that mean? And how do we stop it? Mm -hmm. um, and again, that to me, that's just a critical issue. To it's all part of making Sheboygan what it is. And I'm trying to think what the latest title 
was that they they were talking about Sheboygan's mm. always getting recognized for right. these different things, best place to raise a family, et cetera, right. et cetera. Right. I know there's something right now that Wendy Schmitz is um, working with the city, and she's the director of the um, senior center, okay. and sh they are now working. We've been recognized by AARP as okay. being a um, place where uh, is it's a good place for senior citizens mm -hmm. to. And it was interesting, like uh, travel and you know getting around town. And there were five different, I think, five different areas where they said, "Okay, Sheboygan is mm -hmm. really good at these, and how do we grow that and make it even better?" Right. And then I, I watch um, how the city is really trying to attract the millennium, mm -hmm. millenniums. Mm -hmm. All these different categories <laughs> uh, right, to right. move to the area. Yeah, with all the are, infrastructure that they're building downtown. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's great really to exciting see that. to see. And then, is. and then, then let's talk about the corridor of Indiana Avenue and the I'm trying to think what they're calling that, but they're trying. It's almost like a um, place where you can, where entrepreneurs can start new businesses, and that'll mm -hmm. be happening along Indiana Avenue. That's so it's exciting like, as well. Sheboygan's going to be the you know the happening yeah. place. So yeah, hopefully, all of that mm -hmm. is going to help employers right to attract future employees. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? I don't want to keep. I do this as a volunteer, but even this, I don't want to have to keep doing forever and ever. <laughs> I want to turn it over to somebody else. Right. Now, question for you before we wrap up: mm -hmm. uh, If somebody's interested in CHIRM and how to get more information. Maybe I'm a small company and human resource is what I have to be responsible for. Mm -hmm. How do they find out more about your organization? Um, so they can email me, and is it okay for me? They can email me at charmwdurr at gmail.com. Um, and Durr is spelled D-E-R, like David Edward Robert. Um, they can also visit our Facebook page, uh, which is Sheboygan Area Sherm on Facebook, or they can visit our page on LinkedIn. Okay, so there's mm -hmm. there's ways for them. Yeah, to there tap are different ways to, to definitely and tap into that. For Horizons, definitely you can go to the uh, horizonsforgirls.com website. Uh, Horizons has a Facebook page, and this very quiet little fur ball that's <laughs> underneath the table, Faith. Uh, is definitely, again, a great um, friend of a lot of different organizations. So check out her Facebook page. She even has her oh, own Facebook face. page. But and definitely, I want to see everybody coming down to Fountain Park uh, September 15th at noon. Enjoy the food, the music, the farmer's market. Enjoy the fellowship. Yes, yeah. just get to find out a lot. Find out a lot more about what makes Sheboygan, what it is, and I think that's yeah. going to be exciting. I think that's going to be exciting. Yes, thank you very much for enjoying ignite the spark.